Um, and the reason why I love R is because um, it's probably, for me, it's one of the easier programming languages to pick up. Um, I, I suppose I'm a statistician, so it, it works really naturally for me. So I, can, I think of everything in matrices, so it's just really natural for me. And, uh, and it's really easy to dive into the, to the analysis uh, very quickly. <coughs> then you don't need to create lots of functions, or you don't need to create a lot of, uh, you don't have to go through all the technical parts of a normal programming. Essentially, you know, when you start it up, you can start training the data and you start uh, do all your uh, modeling very quickly. So, um, so for example, um, so just on the weekend, uh, I thought, you know, what would be interesting to, to do is with some of these pictures. So this is just, uh, I suppose, just an example of, uh, of an image analysis uh, program that I use. Uh, it's called uh, EV Image. So essentially what this does, it sort of looks at, takes the and tries to look at the, um, the ages and just highlight uh, some of the ages. So I thought that was a really cool, uh, uh, last, uh, really cool uh, program, uh, basically. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's, that's actually the that's, that's just me um, to create a bit more color of oh, oh, black and white. <laughs> um, and so if you, uh, I suppose that's just another example of some image analysis. So taking a picture of so I just took, took a, a picture of it, of a, of, well actually I took an example outside, put it through uh, this program and to do some interesting, uh, I suppose, interesting illustrations. So, um, yeah, just a bit of fun. Um, I, I suppose probably the greatest <coughs> feature of R is, that, is the fact that um, it's, got, it's got thousands of packages out there. So you usually get probably one of the more uh, latest implementations of R. So you probably won't see, because some of the algorithms are so new, um, you probably won't see in commercial tools. So it, R happens to be one of the best place, or one of the earliest, or one of the earliest places that you can get hold of some of these algorithms. So, and one example is uh, latent Dirichlet allocator. So you probably, who, who here knows uh, latent Dirichlet allocator? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, probably one or two. Um, it's it's, it's one of the newer al algorithms, and you can't get it anywhere else. Uh, well, you can get it in, like in C Sharp and other programs, but R is probably R is one of the newer ones to have this algorithm. So it's great for, you know, if, if you want to try new algorithms, R is really good for that. So um, I'll be talking a, a bit more about, um, about that, actually. So, um, so I'll, I'll use this case study on text analytics. So I did this, I suppose I did this, uh, Last weekend, so I was thinking, uh, what, would, what would be interesting, you know, to, to see? Well, Time, time Magazine is on Twitter, so they've got an account on Twitter, and from time to time they do make, they do send out tweets uh, every day for I think in a few minutes, um, every once in a few minutes or hours. So I can't exactly remember which day I taken I took those tweets, but um, essentially uh, I just took whatever tweets that was on that day. Um, and just have a look and see what's coming up. So, so that's so that's the first six tweets of uh, from Time Magazine on Twitter. Mm. Uh, also, um, I've used this R package called Twitter to essentially R uh, to get R to speak to speak directly with Twitter to and to retrieve tweets directly. So I was wondering. So I was wondering. Okay. So what what are the common words that's coming up from those tweets? I think it was five hundred or six hundred of tweets on that day. So. This is a bit of work club, uh, just to visualize what's coming up. So Techland, Taco, um, SSXSW, I'm not too sure what that is. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a music festival? Okay. Yeah, so so yeah, some interesting tweets coming up on that. Uh, some Doritos as well, which I think may be related to Taco. And and that's just <laughs> and the far right is just zoom in of, of those actual tweets. So so and I use this package called so I suppose when I, when I looked at this, I go, okay, so there's obviously different topics in there. Um, I was wondering, you know, is there, is there some sort of theme or a common topic theme uh, that some of these tweets are, uh, uh, some of these tweets have? So, and that's when I use, that's when Nathan Dirichlet comes in. So it, essentially the idea is that it's um, words, words that, that similar words will, uh, on 
one sim uh, for similar words from the same topic will coexist together and will be and will not coexist from words from another similar topic or, or from a different topic. So, and essentially, so what I was planning to do is, see, can can we can we sort of classify some of these things into separate topics? You know, classify some of these tweets into separate topics. So, essentially, um, so we just quickly um, so. I've, I've set the, uh, the number of teams of topics in four. So, topic, there's, so there's team A, B, C, and D. Um, and for the A team, uh, some of the top words that's, also, that's associated to that topic is like tagline, team libraries, color imagination, and SXSW. And topic D is photo week, with pictures, landscape. So that gives you an idea that that's probably something to do with photography. Uh, topic C is Taco Doritos expected to sell. So, I think I think that was starting to say that you know you'll be ex you Taco Bell is so good you expect it to taste really good I think and uh, and D basically same thing something to do with self image on YouTube so and um, so if you see the, the gray box at the top uh, if you can one up to ten so that's that's the actual tweets um, that I've, I've used the, the first ten tweets as an example here so so yeah that's that, those are the, the, the actual tweets followed by the bar indicates the probability of that tweet being allocated to that topic. Mm -hmm. So so the first so the first uh, the first tweet I suppose uh, has a higher probability of being allocated to the topic D. Um, and the second one is strongly or is pretty much allocated, it's pretty much associated associated to the, the fourth topic. So and um, so just so this is actually so this is uh, the, the actual raw tweet followed by where it's being classified. So you can see that um, if you look through, so the um, it's not it's not exactly accurate, but it's pretty accurate in some cases. So for example, that um, if you look at uh, top tweet number three, five, and six, it's it's <laughs> it's it's correctly allocated the same tweet in the same topic um, with forty percent on the the first one. Um, the second one, it's the second topic. It's uh, it's it looks well. It's taken what's done is taken the photos and it's read the photos and say, yep, all these tweets are pretty much have the have photos in there and landscape. So that's assigned it as the second topic. The third topic, um, the third topic is the one that's probably not so accurate. So it's it's um, it's coming up. So it's probably yeah, it's probably allocating things that aren't that can't be really classified in the other three topics. And the fourth one. The fourth one is probably the most interesting one because so it's, got, it's classifying anything to do with like YouTube and self-image into this into this group. But uh, what's interesting, I suppose, is that if you look at that number eleven and compare it with number two, it doesn't. The I suppose the um, the the words don't actually appear in each other, but it actually does know that uh, that they actually do belong somehow in the same topic. So that one I thought was very interesting, um, and yeah, so that's yeah. Um, oh no, that's just model keeping. Yeah, so that's that's just the actual prediction score. So yeah, yeah. Any questions? So yeah, I think so yeah, I think that's basically um, the end of my presentation. So um, any questions? I've got one. Uh, when yeah? you after you've done the work and you create the model and then you want to operationalize it for a client. Uh, so, so once you're actually going to deploy it into your client's business. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about going to deploy R into their systems or just do you take the algorithm and um, I don't have a lot of visibility on that actually, but what we do is um, we, yeah, actually I don't have a lot of visibility on that. Uh, my understanding is uh, Jim will probably be able to tell us a bit more. Yeah, I, I don't think I've actually seen. I don't think we've deployed. Uh, yeah. Scoring yet. Well, we'll have to see. Say it's GLA. Sell the products, you press go, it generates sales page. Uh, produces the raw code, but it's not that relevant, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Shane, Shane is my work colleague in Taiwan right now. So, yeah. yeah. One of the <coughs> great things about R is if, if I think I want to do this sort of analysis, which might be slightly weird, just Google R and the name of the analysis, and up will come a package because someone will have written it. Yes. The, the bad thing is um, you really have to know what the technique's about to understand the PDF, the manuals that come uh. with the package. And you have to know R pretty well, I think, to really follow it straightforward. And I don't know it well enough yet. So that's a, an ongoing issue. Unless yeah. someone's written what they call the vignettes, like they'll have a, a dumbed-down version of what it does, so you can sort of follow along in yeah. a standard paper. That's right, yeah. It's one of the, yeah, it's one of so the you've the really things. got to know what you're doing before you can do it, before you can understand what it is you're doing. Um, that's true. Yeah, the, um, it's, like, it's an end circle. I can't understand this because I can't understand it. And I don't understand it till I understand it. That's true. Yeah. The uh, um, the this this task here uh, is actually I actually picked it up um, by just reading through the vignettes and actually yeah. forced myself to actually understand what it's doing. Um, and the other thing is you can just keep trying stuff. If it doesn't work, make a change and see if that works. That's right. Yes. So yeah, That's and usually yeah. Mm -hmm. So and usually as well um, when when some of these academic academics uh, release their package. They usually do a company like a, a technical journal uh, along with it as well. So, mm. so if you do look for say random forest, you probably look for you probably will find like a an actual I suppose like an actual academic journal of of how they how those authors actually use that package to implement it on the real case study. So, and I think usually you can you find those um, in this journal called journal journal of statistical software. So. Usually when I when I do search for an algorithm, I search the the journal of statistical statistical software to accompany it as well. And usually, yeah, it helps you. I suppose um, helps you walk through the examples and understand actually what's happening. So, yeah. Uh, not to develop an environment you use for R. <coughs> yeah, as in you know, when you're coding. Ah, oh, um, I use R Studio. Um, so, yeah, it's hopefully that answers your question. But R Studio is. Um, it's, it's, I suppose it's a GUI interface on top of R, so it just, I'll, I think I might be able to show R Studio. But yeah, uh, it's, I recommend R Studio because it actually really helps. Um, it's a lot easier to use R Studio than just R. So, yeah. You uh, mentioned before about uh, being in competition, so I'm curious about how that works. Oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very long question. Uh, that's a, going to have a very long answer. But um, there's well, there's a there's a platform called Kaggle, uh, which is a it is a platform for predictive modeling competitions or actually data mining competitions in general. So, um, so essentially, oh, so usually what I do is uh, every every now and then they do release uh, new competitions with varying degrees of uh, or with varying price uh, uh, prices. So. Some of them can go up to like a thousand dollars to thirty thousand to sixty to three million. So, um, and and yeah, so different problems as well. Uh, some of them uh, might be related to scientific. Well, some of them might be like to solve uh, the NASA problem of trying to predict dark matter in the universe. Some of them predicting, uh, I suppose, uh, hospital hospitalization uh, as well. So yeah, it's um, usually yeah that's where I you sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, when I have time, uh, I work on those competitions. So what you do is you download the data, you download the data uh, from, from, from that website, and basically you try and predict, uh, I suppose, yeah, try to predict, predict uh, essentially whatever you're predicting. So um, I, will, I, I can spend a little bit more time with you on Kaggle, but uh, I, I, I'm just curious, just cautious that I don't want to go into Kaggle too much. Can you just talk about the competition you won? Maybe just that. Okay. <laughs> The competition that I just that I won um, is actually with um, with one of the uh, uh, participants here. Uh, uh, his name is Alex, so sitting right there. So essentially, um, the, the task was to predict um, the likelihood of of someone uh, having financial dis financial distress in the next few in the next year or so. So essentially, what you get is you get a data set of some of the Historical data of of the uh, background, so like age, um, income, uh, and I can't remember credit credit histories, how many how much loans they have, and and also uh, uh, I suppose a dependent column of whether they actually had financial distress or not. So essentially, essentially your task is to is to predict, is to learn from that data set and try and I suppose generalize that understanding across a, a new 
set of data, which which pretty much pretty much has the same amount of information, but just doesn't have the uh, the actual random score. So and basically the task is trying to fill in those blanks. Yeah. So if I did my master thesis in the in, in that area as well. In, in which area, sorry? In the um, probability reports. So why you okay. that? Yeah. What sort of like um, if you don't mind to share what sort of exactly algorithm you use in terms of research? Um So the we use it, it's an ensemble essentially. It's an ensemble of uh, random forest uh, uh, gradient hosting machine, yep. mm. and um, and also there's we also included a new set of features as well. So it's a bit of a feature extraction extraction to to I suppose boost up the uh, the data set and uh, and yeah the algorithms essentially is an ensemble of random forest and GBM. Yeah. Slightly different. No, I'm just commenting as a as a package author. You know, a lot of you are saying we didn't have a package author. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit that um, I get emails about my packages, and if they're not bug reports, the emails get deleted, not replied to, mm -hmm. uh, because it's for bug reporting. It's not we're not consultants, and we're not here to help you on technical issues. <laughs> so if you're going to email a maintainer of a package, bear in mind that system. And it should be the maintainer, not the author. If you're going to email the maintainer of the package, bear in mind that technically that system is for bug reporting. It's not for you know, getting help about technical issues behind the package. It's really not. That's what the mailing list is for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I haven't been able to get around it really. Yeah, like like other than saving the data, or other than store, storing the data, data set on SQL and just retrieving that data set. You know, I've not been able to, to resolve. When you, when you say that, you mean like just taking out the default that you use and the whole Yeah, yeah. Because usually, imagine if you're not using the, uh, the, I suppose, imagine if you're not using the database. So what will happen usually is that you'll be uploading the data from a CSV file, and then you go, oh, okay, so this is a CSV file, but um, I don't. I only want to keep certain columns. So then, what happens is that you'll be creating a, another copy of that data set. That 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 copy actually just clogs up your memory in R. So so yeah. And uh, so instead of you know making multiple copies of it, you know, just do a SQL select query uh, to just retrieve whatever you want. So it helps a bit, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that. 